Hey everyone, it's Eric Dore here, and in today's video, I want to talk about my new system for understanding personality psychology, polymathematics. Polymathematics is my alternative to the traditional Myers-Briggs type indicator and the 16 personalities. It is an in-depth system which takes on a more empirical, specific and measurable approach to personality. And so gone are the stereotypes, the jargon, the superficiality that we often find in online personality descriptions. No longer do you have to read through descriptions full of a forer effect, telling you nice positive sounding things that don't really mean anything in practice. Instead, I offer a model which goes with precision and depth into your character and who you really are past your persona and how you tend to choose to appear to the world. Since I started this channel, I've been working towards more new ones. I often found many traditional models and systems so abstract that they couldn't be used in the real world. I don't know how I would use the traditional MBTI or many of the traditional models if to make better decisions in my personal life, in my relationships and in my job. Nobody could use the MTI to tell me how I should improve myself or better myself. There was no objective model for personal development, personal growth or how to increase your consciousness or awareness of life. How do you improve your well-being? How do you achieve flow? How do you make better decisions for yourself? These questions were mysteriously absent from the MTI. Polymathematics is built to be a model that can easily connect to traditional systems because the MBTI is not a useless or completely inaccurate model and while the MBTI has its problems with consistency, predictability and with application, it does offer interesting insights into yourself. Model through all the shallow and superficial, there are a lot of nuggets of depth from the MBTI often connected to the work of psychologist Carl Jung. And I'm not here to tell you that everything about the MTI is wrong. I'm here to tell you that there are things that could be better. I'm here to say that we can go deeper. To build my new model, I set three new criteria for myself. The new model, it had to be more applied. It had to really connect to real life situations, Scenarios you encounter in groups, with people, at work, and in your personal life. Secondly, it has to be predictable and consistent. And what I mean with that is that you should be able to predict with reasonable accuracy what personality a person has. And you should be able to, when talking to that person, get that person to achieve that same result as what you predicted. People should behave to some extent closely aligned with the model. The model can't just be something that works in a lab, it also has to work on the people on which it is being used. Predictability means that you can make statistical predictions based on what you know about the person in regards to their life choices, their career, their energy, motivation, choices. You have to find things that relate to and connect to the thing that you study. Thirdly, I wanted the polymathematics model to be an inspiration for people to broaden and diversify their skill sets and to develop themselves. I want people that use this model to immediately get ideas on things they would like to improve in their lives, from ways to improve on their existing skill sets to go even deeper into their core personality traits, but also ways to build and improve and strengthen weaknesses in their lives so that these are not crippling them from achieving things in their day-to-day -day lives. And I wanted people to use this model to understand how they can achieve a flow state. You can see how easy it is to use polymathematics when you start to understand the 16 basic traits. The 16 basic traits are 16 original traits that have not really been discussed in the Myers-Briggs type indicator or in the 16 personalities. In this part of the video, I'm going to show you the elegance of polymathematics and how it integrates with the classic Myers-Briggs type indicator and with the Big Five personality system, starting with the different four personality traits and temperaments that we recognize from the MBTI. 
So, these four traits can all be further differentiated into subcategories, and it's these subcategories that we talk about when we talk about personality. So when a person is extroverted, we can say that they belong to one of four possible categories of extroverts. Similarly, there are four categories of judging types and four categories of introverts and four categories of perceivers. And yeah, there are people that have all four of these traits and there are people that only have two or three, right? And you can have them more or less, right? So let's start out with the first trait and category, and that is an extroverted category. It's initiative. Now, initiative is something that you see predominantly in extroverts, but also to a high extent in judging personality types. So what does initiative look like? First of all, it's wanting to get something done quickly. So it's valuing speed over quality. So it can be introducing yourself first at a group event. It can be, for example, introducing or starting up conversations or taking the initiative in a conversation to say, let's talk about this, so let's go there. And it allows you to be one of the first to do something. And that is something that allows you to explore and learn new things before anyone else. Now, extroversion can also be described as something that gives you a higher tendency towards collaboration. Now, collaboration, that is, for example, taking an interactive approach to your environment. That is, looking at how to use your environment and the people around you to solve problems. It can mean asking other people for feedback. It can be having a group discussion about something. It can be working on a project together with other people. Extroversion relies on collaboration to solve problems. And collaboration is a trait that is predominantly extroverted, but can also be found to a high extent in people that are strong in perceiving. Now, to further go deeper into this, let's talk about introversion. Introversion carries two specific traits that you can see very strongly. The first thing you can see very strongly in introverts is this desire towards precision. Now, with precision, what I mean in general is quality over quali quantity. It means wanting to get the job done correctly. Introverts have a higher innate error sensitivity, meaning they notice errors more quickly than extroverts or judging types do, and meaning that they are more sensitive to these kinds of mistakes, and that they spend more time correcting mistakes and ensuring that the job is done right. This can cause them to slightly lack in initiative, meaning the two are anti-correlated. When you are being fast and taking initiative, you make more mistakes. When you are in a precision-oriented thinking space, you are and work more slowly at things. Another trait you'll find consistently in introverted personality types is independence, and that is preferring to work on problems on your own, right? So being self-reliant, preferring to use an internal approach of thinking about something or working at something by yourself until you've released or reached a solution to a problem. Independence allows you to take a step back from other people and from the group, consider yourself and to think about what it is that you would do to solve something or do something, ignoring what other people would think or ignoring what other people might do in a situation, your own approach. It's different from collaboration. Now, let's get into judging. Judging and perceiving were two dichotomies that were added into the MBTI that were not really discussed in Carl Jung's original system, but yet they talk about important and interesting differences between people. And we can see these also to some extent in Big Five's conscientiousness. Now, the two traits that you can see in judging types is, first of all, assertiveness. Assertiveness means, for example, having a high opinion of yourself and your own opinions and capabilities. Assertive people tend to overestimate their skills and abilities, but they tend to also be very confident in the sense that they can get the job done and that something is possible. This allows them to make bolder and more ambitious plans for the future, and it allows them to speak more passionately about what they believe should be done. 
We can compare this trait to another trait, which is found in perceiving types. Perceiving types tend to be typically modest. With modesty, I mean that you tend to have a lower opinion of your own capabilities and of your own goals. Modest people tend to set less high goals and less ambitious goals, and modest people tend to be a bit more careful about how they present their ideas and opinions to a group. Speaking in more ambiguous terms, showing more uncertainty, and asking more questions about themselves. This allows them to ensure that they get things done correctly, but it can also cause them to struggle to speak passionately and assertively about what they want with other people, causing their opinions to fall behind. Another key trait that you will see in the judging personality type, stability is what allows a judging type to stick to an approach or a plan or a goal rather than change it up. And other type might choose a more adaptable approach, right? So we can see in the perceiving type adaptability. Adaptability being something which allows you to adjust and change your goals and approach to the situation. Adaptability is a slightly more extroverted and slightly more perceiving personality trait. And it's predominantly found in perceiving personality types and especially perceiving subtypes. With that, stability allows you to be more consistent in what you do and in how you do things. These are the eight general traits for introverts, extroverts, judgers, and perceivers, right? And what you can see is there are overlaps between all these traits, right? So introversion and judging have, to some extent, both stability in their stack, while perceiving and extroverts both share collaboration as a normal, normally found personality trait. Now, let's take intuition, then let's take sensing, then let's take thinking, then let's take feeling. For these types, similar things apply. There are eight traits and they can overlap with each other to some extent. For intuition, there is open-mindedness and there is big picture thinking. For feeling, there is optimism and there is agreeableness. For sensing, there is attention and the ability to focus or concentrate on what's at hand. For thinking, there are two traits. Skepticism, being task-oriented. Lastly, for sensing, we see prioritization. Now, what do these things mean? Attention means focusing on what is at hand. When somebody is telling you a story and when somebody is doing something and you have to observe that person and what they are doing and recall what it is that they did, that is something that requires attention and focus. Being able to concentrate with what's hand instead of zooming out, detaching from the situation and entering into a state of daydreaming or mind wandering. Intuition is more big picture oriented, meaning it will often zoom out and gets more easily distracted, entering into a, an imaginative state where they don't recall or pay attention to what is happening around them. Big picture thinking is shared to some extent with thinking types that can also fall into detaching from a situation, or what's happening, to analyze or think about what's going on. Thinking is predominantly task oriented where feeling is agreeable. So, feeling types and sensing types respond much more strongly to seeing a person and to dealing with people and social matters. While thinking types and intuitive types tend to light up the most when dealing with things, ideas, tasks, goals, objectives. And so, these types share different interests. Task-oriented types focus on getting the job done and solving the problem. Feeling and sensing types focus on connecting with people, collaborating with the group, sharing moments with others, being in harmony with others. That's why they are agreeable. And that's why thinking and intuition can be more disagreeable. Intuition is open-minded, meaning that intuition, along with feeling, is more likely to consider ideas without a bias or judgment. To an intuitive or a feeling type, all ideas have merit and are interesting to consider. 
even the less likely or more far-fetched ones, and intuitives can be more open-minded to opinions that disagree with their own initial opinion or bias. Thinking and sensing is more skeptical, and with that I mean they are more likely to ask questions and to question things, right? What you'll see is when feeling is optimistic about the situation and expects a positive outcome or result, thinking expects a negative outcome or result and is more problem-solving oriented. What are the problems of an idea? What are the opportunities of an idea? These are two different ways of thinking about the same thing. Sensing and thinking is about prioritization. Sensing, in particular, is more about prioritizing. What is most important right now? What are the immediate concerns? What are the low-hanging fruits? What are the easy fixes? What are the things that need to be done? That requires prioritization, being able to take ideas and to judge and rate in a hierarchy which ones are interesting to think about. Being in a state of prioritization makes you less open-minded. It requires more judgment about which ideas are far-fetched or unlikely and which ones are important. And so a sensing type might discard crazy or far-fetched ideas that disagree with their own opinion and what they already believe because they have other ideas and more pressing concerns that they think are more interesting to think about. And these are the 16 general traits and personality types. Now, you can get started right away with using polymathematics. How do you do it? First, you can take my personality test on personalitopia.com slash personality minus test, or just go to polypersonalitopia.com. Now, after that, what you can do is you can order an extended report. I offer 30 to 35 page reports with extended insights so you can learn all about these dichotomies and what they mean and how they relate to your personality and your results. After that, what you can do is you can always go and take these traits and take these definitions from my Patreon page, patreon.com slash Eric You can use and test these definitions out on friends and family members and on yourself. You can journal and reflect on how you display these traits and how you relate to them and which traits you'd like to develop next. You can ask your friends about them. How do you feel? Do you feel like you're more assertive or more modest? Do you feel like you have more initiative or more precision? And check what other people say. See how easy it is to use and notice how it integrates so effortlessly with traditional models. If you're already an expert on other systems, you'll find that it's a very easy thing to pick up and use and that it offers a lot of in-depth insight. If you want to figure out your personal subtype, my in-depth report will give you answers to what subtype you are and your personal health level and whether you are more in flow, stress or rest at this time. You can also think about how you display these traits in different situations and what traits you display the most in a state of flow. You might also want to reflect on which intelligences that you display the most often and how they relate to your base personality traits. Which of these skills do you feel that you have and manifested and learned to use the most effectively today? And which skills would you like to develop next? Or how can you improve your existing skill sets more? You can also offer coaching sessions and one-on-ones where you have the chance to talk for an hour and share your personal experiences and situations and get questions and insights that help you reflect on yourself and gain higher self-awareness. Using these systems, you can enhance your emotional intelligence, improve your relationships and improve your well-being and happiness. So you have nothing to lose with using polymathematics. You got a chance to go a lot deeper in the MBTI and in personality psychology to realize even more about yourself and your life. So every single person you encounter is unique. Personality types are just generalizations that we use to simplify our study of personality. To test the predictability of the model, I would approach people on the streets, in cafes and in public spaces and I'd ask them to take a personality test. Before they took the personality test, I would make a brief guess or estimation of what kind of personality I thought they would get and what kind of result I'd expect from them on the personality test. Afterwards, I'd check that their answers and the results lined up with my prediction. And so what I could see was that in 75% of cases, based on just a one minute interaction with a person, I was able to guess what personality they would have in my model and 
they would get a personality that closely aligned with that guess. That meant that yes, using the definitions in my model and the traits in my model, you can immediately get a quick idea about what personality a person has, just based on a quick interaction with a person, you can already make some general estimations about a person. Now of course, people can always prove to be more than what they first appear to be, and of course not everyone will 100% fit inside a model, but on average I found that people consistently would score close to what I predicted that they would. To make my model more applied, I'd choose words that very clearly and precisely got to the depth of what a person's character was. I didn't use any abstract jargon, I used and chose words that I knew people would very quickly have a strong idea about, so that people could immediately get into the model and start using it without any need for extensive training or long in-depth speculation. And so by eliminating the jargon, I could also prevent people from having multiple different interpretations on the same concept. Yeah, by staying specific, by staying real, and by choosing empirical words that can be measured and studied in people, I made the model more easy to be applied consistently by a group of people in the same way. To further the use of my model for health and personal development, I also correlated these different personality traits and characteristics to different emotions. And so by studying your emotions and what you are feeling, you can study how you act depending on what you feel. And you can find that different personality traits will affect your mood in different ways. And so by thinking about what you're feeling in a specific situation, you can understand why you feel a certain way and what you can do about it. And there, you can improve your emotional intelligence, your emotional management skills. You can get better at self-recognition, recognizing how you feel in a specific time, but also how to better manage your feelings to avoid unnecessary self-destructive behavior. I truly believe in the promise of polymathematics and its use, and how it can complement and add to existing theories on personality psychology. I have a background having studied both the Big Five and the MBTI and the Enneagram and I've learned from all the different models and systems of personality psychology and positive psychology and I've tried to integrate the best of all these models into one singular model and a singular system. And I've also tried to my best to, in order to make sure that the model is predictable and consistent, align and correlate it to existing models so that you can see how different traits would compare to different systems. Yeah, if you can find that you are a certain person in my model, you might to some extent correlate with being a certain personality in other systems and models. The main, main thing, the most important thing is that we ensure that we use definitions the same way and that we apply and test personality the same way. Different systems and different theories have different ideas about what personality is and what personality traits should be studied and which are the most interesting. The DISC will focus on your temperament and characteristics at work, for example, how you tend to act or appear your temperament, but it tends to disregard your interests and motivations. The Enneagram tends to focus keenly on your motivations and your emotions. And the MBTI tends to focus very much on your persona and general characteristics that you will display and things that you tend to find quite important. The Big Five tends to focus on the numeristic quantitative aspects of your personality, ignoring your cognition, ignoring how you think and ignoring why you behave a certain way. The Big Five focuses on what you're actually doing and objectively acting like in different scenarios. Carl Jung's theories on the cognitive functions allow us to go in depth and think about how we perceive and experience the world, our inner world, our thoughts, and why we do the things that we do. My own model maps out 16 distinct intelligences that each reference different abilities and skills that we can manifest in the world. Yeah, because there's not just one way to be intelligent or one way to be smart. You can be smart in so many different ways. And you can have so many different skills. And even if you're a really intelligent person who is really skilled in a certain area, you can still learn something from every single person you meet because every single person knows something that you don't. And yeah, that's also an inspiration towards developing yourself and becoming a polymath. 
a person of wide skill and ability. Now, let's talk about the 16 intelligences. And to do that, I've cleaned up the list we just made to the base keywords, and let's focus on the different possible archetypes and intelligences, starting with introverted and thinking personality types. If a person is introverted and thinking, they're going to manifest the archetype of the scientist, scholar, or expert, and what we could call mathematical intelligence, allowing them to think about and solve problems by themselves using a system or a method or an approach. You can compare it to what happens with introverted and feeling types, which tend to take on the archetype of a healer or a counselor using intrapersonal intelligence to gain wisdom into emotions and feelings and to use that to be able to help and support other people, including themselves. Introverted intuition, on the other hand, creates the characteristics of somebody with high visual spatial intelligence, allowing them to imagine and envision things in their mind allowing them to think like sages or writers or philosophers about abstract topics using a big picture approach and open-minded reflection. Finally, introverted sensing creates the characteristics of a scribe or a builder or a craftsman that is able to use recipes and information and experience to solve problems, to create and construct things, or to be able to note down and document information effectively. Another part of it is extroversion. Extroversion creates, when combined with thinking, the characteristics of a pilot who coordinates or manages projects. Using what you could call systems thinking, they will see and they will spot available resources and think about how to manage these effectively to achieve goals and solve problems. Like a pilot piloting a plane, or like a coordinator coordinating a project. Extroverted feeling creates the characteristics of an every person, who is literally every person, who is able to relate and use interpersonal intelligence to connect easily with people around them. Extroverted intuition creates the characteristics of an inventor, a wordsmith, or a researcher who is able to quickly gather information on a problem or an issue to understand it from a bigger picture view using open-minded speculation to come up with possible ideas and using verbal and linguistic intelligence to quickly understand new ideas and new theories and new research. Finally, extroverted sensing creates the characteristics of an explorer or adventurer. But my approach allows you to go deeper than the eight traditional cognitive functions and intelligences. You can also talk about and divine characteristics based on whether a person is a judging or a perceiving type. So, for example, if you take thinking and judging, you create the characteristics of an engineer, somebody who uses mechanical principles or order and structure, like a ruler to impose an order and a set way that the world should work observe the laws of reality and understand them and master them and use them to solve problems. Feeling judging is and creates the characteristics of a knight, a negotiator, a public speaker, an orator, somebody who is able to craft persuasive messages that will influence the people around them in a positive way, creating harmony around them. Intuitive judging creates the capabilities of a strategist, a planner, or you could even say an oracle, somebody who is able to see the future and what is possible, somebody who can envision new things, and think of a likely course of action, and then to think of the right way to act or to live to achieve this kind of vision or goal. Sensing judging creates the characteristics of a protector, an organizer, or administrator, who uses logistical intelligence to think of how to do things, how to prepare a fed of a problem, how to manage logistics, transportation, and different systems and different resources to do things in a prioritized and efficient manner. Perceiving creates, when combined with thinking, 
the personality of a merchant or hacker trying to trade or negotiate the best deal, trying to find out the rules of the game so that they can use game intelligence to break down and understand what's happening to find the best deal or best solution or best way to solve a problem. Feeling perceiving is like a bard, a journalist or a performer. Somebody who is well attuned to listening, to understanding people and what people say and think and to be able to create and express themselves in creative ways using music, using art, using writing, they can find a way to put themselves out there in the world or to put out the message of other people around them to the world. Intuition and perceiving is like a rebel, an innovator, a detective, somebody who figures out the clues based on available patterns and thinks creatively of what ifs, what could be, what could happen and how could it have happened. This allows them to think outside the box and come up with creative and associative ideas. Sensing and perceiving is like an athlete, a dancer or an artisan. Somebody who is able to use in the here and now, think of on the spot what to do and how to do something, how to react to something that just happened spontaneously, to improvise, to act, to be engaged with the situation fully. This is playful, this is often something that an athlete or dancer or artisan will display. And in order to use this model for health, personal development and well-being, I chose to align my study of personality with the study of how people are in flow. I found that people have a true and core personality which you can see when they are at their best. And yeah, when people are in a state of stress, their personality and characteristics can change to be the opposite of what they normally are. And yeah, when a person is at their best, in a happy state of mind, doing something they enjoy and feel confident in, yeah, their personality is something that they enjoy, something that they find motivating, something that they feel confident about, and something that feels natural for them to use for themselves. Personality is not your persona or your mask or the things that you put on in social settings. Sure, you can act in any way you like with any person you meet. You can pretend to be a certain kind of person or to, for a moment, in a temporary situation or in a specific context, practice or rehearse a set of behaviors or characteristics so that you can wield those for a time in that specific situation. But every single person has a set of personality traits and natural inclinations and preferences which they will demonstrate when they are at their best. And to get to know a person for who they are, we have to stop focusing on how they appear or want to appear to us. And we have to start thinking about what they really are. And so we have to study the core of a person and ask them, what are you like at your best? And we have to look and pay attention. When does a person show energy or passion or motivation for something? When does a person seem the most confident? When does a person seem the most comfortable and calm and stable? And when they are in that state, what personality traits and characteristics are they exhibiting? Though I don't have a stack, I do have a system of health, which allows me to track what people might act or do depending on whether they are in flow, rest, growth or disintegration. Right, so as for an example, let's take an introverted and feeling personality type. Somebody who has introversion and somebody who has feeling, and namely a healer or a counselor with interpersonal intelligence. This kind of a person is in flow when introverting and when using feeling or taking on the quality of a healer or a counselor. However, there are other states you can go into. Namely, you can go into disintegration. Disintegration is when a task becomes so difficult that we give up. Mentally, we check out and we switch strategies from our natural strategy to our opposing strategy. Hereby, you might see a person switch to extroverted, thinking, and so you'd see the qualities of a pilot or somebody who is a coordinator or projector.
otherwise, as long as the stress or the challenge of a project feels manageable and not impossible, and as long as you are still motivated and engaged with the task, you'll stay in a state we can call growth. Now, growth is still going to be feeling. So it's still going to have this natural tendency for you. It's going to be a task you find motivating and feeling is motivating. However, this task might be more extroverted. And so you might see the person take on more extroverted traits. So we'd see them being extroverted. So extroverted feeling becomes the predominant function here. And what we see then is a person that switches into more of an every person, a diplomat, a host, somebody that is working with people, managing group discussions, facilitating a good connection between people, or making a genuine effort to relate to and connect with others. Stressful, difficult, yes, but very rewarding. If you stress yourself for a long time, you're going to need rest. The more you use this function, the more rest you are going to need. Now, how does somebody who is introverted and feeling rest? Well, first they use introverted strategies. Introverts rest by introverting. Surprise. <laughs> And what else do they do? They use thinking. Yeah, so you can use thinking in both of these scenarios. So when you use introverted thinking in this case, you are going into rest mode. And what helps an introverted and feeling type kind of mentally numb themselves, relax and tune out to a situation? Well, things that require you to think like a scholar, a scientist or an expert. Numbers, data, figures, these things help introverted and feeling types relax, shut off their mind, and lower some motivation and passion for a topic so that they can tune out and zoom out and start to recharge. And using these kinds of terminologies and concepts, you can study what and why you feel the way that you do and how you can do to improve your mood and motivation and maintain a positive state as flow as much as possible, avoiding the trap of disintegration or learning to engage in growth and if different strategies to still be able to access these traits. By using my 16 traits and the idea of flow and stress, I can map out subtypes based on not just your personality and your specialization within the personality type range, but also your mood and how your subtype might change or your behavior might change depending on what you're feeling or depending on if you're in flow or in stress or in a state of rest. And I can offer specific advice based on how you can improve your flow and to have more energy, motivation and confidence in your life in general. Instead of just slapping a personality type label on you, I give you a 30 to 35 page report with all these different insights so that you can spend time really getting to know yourself and thinking about how you might act in a wide range of different situations. Yeah, I track how you act privately, socially, professionally and recreationally. I track your emotional needs and health and how you act and how you are in intellectual situations and in emotional situations and in situations that require logic or skill or skills or situations that require a more practical approach to life. Because we're not the same in every single situation and we're not something that we can be reduced to a simple stereotype and while it can be fun to watch videos that give five minute or five second descriptions about us using loose vague t keywords and traits it's really important that we take the time to really understand ourselves and other people because if we don't understand ourselves we can't make positive decisions about who we are to be what we want to do with our lives where we want to live what kind of people we want to date or what we need in order to be happy and healthy in our life. So if you want to support Polymathematics, I offer a wide range of services. You can offer, for example, a 30 to 35 page report where you can get 
typed and you can get to know yourself better. You can get coaching, you can attend workshops monthly to discuss the ideas and to learn about how these ideas manifest in your life. And you can be a part of the research and the ongoing projects to extend and improve on this model and the terms and definitions so that we can get even deeper, studying people even better and understanding each other's even more. Thank you so much for supporting my channel and my work. Check out the links down below and see you all in the next video.